Greetings to our online reviewees from more than 60 countries in six continents. This is Irvin Neal A. Temporal, the founder and CEO of 9.09 or English. When IELTS was first introduced to the market, it was just IELTS on paper. Several years later, IELTS on computer was introduced to the candidates. However, because of technology, now we have a new system where you can possibly take IELTS at home. That's why we are featuring Miss Stel Angeles, one of our candidates who took IELTS at home. We're going to divide this discussion into six portions. The first video will focus on the preparation, registration, anything, everything that needs to be done before the test, followed by a discussion of the four subtests. After that, we're going to talk about what happened after the exam and how many days she had to wait for the results to be released. So first things first, uh, Ms. Tell, would you like to greet our reviewees from more than 60 countries in six continents? Okay. So hello, everyone, and um, welcome to today's session with Urban. Um, okay, so where do we start? Maybe we can talk about the registration mm -hmm. process. So what was the first step when you registered for IELTS at home? Okay. So um, I actually had to wait for an email okay, from the test center to authorize me to actually register for the, uh, for the email, for the uh, home tests. Okay? And then um, as soon as I uh, received the email, um, all I had to do was click on the link okay, and it goes to the landing page of the test center where I had to follow all the instructions, okay? So you just have to register your name, um, include your, attach your ID, you know, so whatever legal ID, preferably passport or um, uh, any, any other international ID that you might have. And aside from that, uh, prepare also your credit card because you will have to pay uh, using your credit card. So all you have to do is just follow the sequence of uh, um, preparation that is required. And as soon as you're done filling in your information, you're filling up your profile page, uh, you will be asked to pay. As soon as you make the payment, you will again have to wait for your confirmation that you, they have received your payment and that you will be given the date for your exam. This time around, let's talk about the examination fee. IELTS, the cost of the IELTS examination varies from one country to another. So in the case of the Filipino candidates, it's 11,990 pesos. And we were told that in other countries, sometimes it's more expensive, sometimes it's a little bit cheaper. But when you took the mm -hmm. examination, how much did you pay for IELTS at home? So, um, well, the exchange rate at the time was a little bit on the high side. So equivalent rate is about 12,600. Um, and, uh, um, and at the same time, it, was, it reflected immediately on your card. So you are assured that, uh, you are, that the payment is legitimate and that you are now ready to take your exam. Uh, would you remember how much that was in U.S. dollars but, uh, when you registered for the examination? Okay. So that's likely about 240. Okay. 240. So ladies and gentlemen, we are accurate as of time of recording because you'll never know because of inflation from $240, it might go up to 250 260 We'll never know. But as of now, it's 240 U.S. dollars for IELTS at home. Now let us move on to the payment method. When you're taking the examination, obviously credit card is allowed for you to use as payment method. However, in certain countries, they allow bank deposit. It's just that for IELTS at home, it's strictly credit card. So in your case, Ms. Mm -hmm. Stell, uh, did you pay in US dollars or did they accept Philippine pesos? And which specific card uh, would you mind telling us if it was a Visa or MasterCard? Is it an international bank or a local bank? Okay, so um, my credit card uh, is with uh, an international bank uh, with the local branch, right? Mm -hmm. So um, definitely when I was charged the amount of uh, 240, 
uh, when it is reflected in your statement of account, it's already in pesos. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. This time, let's talk about the ID. If you are taking the examination in the Philippines, here are the options. So you can use your passport or your professional license. You can use your social security system ID. But when you registered for the test, which ID did you upload? Okay, so I actually used my passport. Um, and uh, eventually when you upload that, you will again be asked to verify that to be sure that you are one and the same as your ID. Because you're taking the examination at home where you require to have a webcam when you yes. took the test. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, everything actually, uh, your webcam has to be on the whole time because that's the only way that your prompter will be monitoring everything that you do during the exam. So that means to say, even if you're taking the test at home, there is someone who is supervising the entire process. Now, another question. Was there a required inter internet speed when you registered for the examination? And if there is any, would you remember the required internet speed? Okay. I I wasn't so sure. I, I can't really remember the but I, uh, but what they did was during the actual exam, part of the pre pre preparation or the pre test preparation, they will actually check on your on your speed and on the um, specifications of your internet plus your PC. So there's a time when they will actually go inside your computer uh, remotely to check on that. Okay. So far we talked about the registration process, the amount, the payment method, the identification, webcam, uh, internet speed. Is there anything else you'd like to share during your preparation or anything related to anything related mm -hmm. to the examination prior to the actual test? Okay. So, um, well, part of the things that you're supposed to prepare is the place where you're going to be conducting your exams. So it has to be very quiet because everything um, from from your screen everything has to be open so which means that they will actually see uh, your room if you have a background better uh, but if not um, they will make sure that they check your surroundings because that's the only way they will be able to determine if that you are all alone and that there are no um, there are no possibility of fraud or cheating in the tablets. So number one, it has to be a quiet place. Your signal has to be constantly um, uh, available for the duration. Remember, um, for speaking, you will be doing the test for about 20 minutes, but for your listening, reading, and writing, that will require about three hours. So your internet speed has to be consistent for those next three hours. So guys, that wraps up our first video. In the next four videos, we're going to talk about the four subtests. So one video per component, one for listening, one for reading, one for writing, and one for speaking. We'll see you in the next video.